In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for mayor. If you've ever given any thought to that or someday think you might like to run, watch this video. It's unique. It's different than other races that you're used to seeing. I'm going to tell you exactly how it's done and it works regardless of the size of the city where you live. What we're going to cover in this video is why races for mayor are unique and unlike any other kind of races. How you get on the ballot, how you put a campaign together, how you develop a message, how you become the most informed candidate running for mayor. Stick with me because we're going to cover all of these in the sections of this video. What makes a race for mayor unique and unlike any other? You know, if you're running for the Senate, if you're running for Congress, or if you're running for some county clerk or something like that, voters evaluate you on kind of different criteria than they do as a candidate for mayor. And why? Because the responsibilities of a mayor are a lot different than most other offices. And here's the thing. You affect the way people live more than any other public official in their life. You decide where their sidewalks are repaired or left in disrepair. You deal with potholes in the street. You have to plow snow when it snows. You have to deal with the flood when it comes. You run a fire department. In some cities, you run the schools. That makes you a little bit different because this affects the way people live. It affects the agenda that you talk about when you're running and they need to know above and beyond all else that you're going to be sensitive to their concerns and attentive to their problems when they need help. So how do you know what the problems are in your city? Well, if you don't already have a good idea, let me give you a few pointers. Get in a car and drive around. Better yet, have someone drive you so that you can watch everything instead of driving. Take notes on what you see. Occasionally stop the car, get out, walk around a block or two. Talk to the merchants or the people that you run into. Because here's the thing about cities, they're inherently complicated. Why? They attract, tend to, a very diverse group of people. It is the place that new migrants come to assimilate into the American culture. It's where they congregate because it's where they are most likely to find people who look like them and talk like them and this makes cities inherently difficult to govern with lots of competing interests. If you feel that you're not completely aware, why seek people out who are experts on the city people who've run for mayor before you, other experts who observe or provide services to people in the city, and they'll tell you what the problems are. The third point I'm going to mention is getting on the ballot. If you're not on the ballot, you're not going to win. So a uh, point out, every city tends to have a different set of rules than the states in which they are. And sometimes those rules are very different than it is for other kinds of officials that are running for a state office. Take the time to make sure you absolutely know every requirement, every detail on your city board of elections website so that you don't screw up your petitions or your application to be on the ballot or miss some nominal fee that they charge you to have your name there. The fourth point I would mention about running for mayor is the importance of establishing what I call a brain trust. What is a brain trust? It is a group of experts who understand the ins and outs of policy. There is only so much money in a city budget. And lots of people argue over their piece of the pie. And you need policy experts that deal with transportation, infrastructure, sewers, water supplies, the police department, the fire department, the sanitation department, the garbage schedules, who know the ins and outs of that policy. Because if you have a good fundamental understanding of that, you will be able to talk more intelligently about what you're going to do, how reallocating money might work for a better city, or 
simple knowledge when you're talking to reporters and sharp questioners and in television interviews to demonstrate that you are fully knowledgeable about the challenges facing the city where you are running. The fifth point I would mention here is the importance of attracting a network of influential people and opinion leaders who will vouch for your authenticity, your intelligence, and your ability to do the job. I know there are thousands of ways to communicate with voters, but the fact is every city has a group of people who are just a little bit more important than rank and file voters. It could be the leader of civic and community organizations. It could be the leaders of a political party if you're running in a city that has partisan races for mayor. It could be other elected officials, members of the city council who are already served, that whose endorsement may help you win an election. Take the time to build the network, because here's the truth. If you do not have a stout network running in a citywide election, it's going to be very difficult for you to attract the kind of support you need if nobody who knows these leaders is aware that any of these leaders are supporting you, or if none of these leaders are willing to vouch for you despite how good your rhetoric sounds. Oh, by the way, if you got any questions about what I'm telling you or any comment to make, I will read the comment and I will answer your question. Leave it in the comment box. My sixth point about this is how you craft your message. You have to be able to tell people why you want the job and what you're going to do with it if you get it. It's fundamental to attracting voters. So here is in a nutshell what voters are going to expect you to tell them. What makes you qualified to be my mayor and make decisions about my quality of life? How do I know that your moral code is in sync with mine? Do you care about the same, same things I do? Is your notion of right and wrong, good and evil, in sync with mine? Because I need to know that your heart and your head are in the right place. Third thing is, what problems are you going to fix? How are you going to move this city forward? How are you going to improve my quality of life? Is there some injustice that you want to correct about the way things are done? Is there some wrong you want to right? Voters will expect you to tell them that, and if you go through a whole campaign and don't mention it, they're gonna have no idea what you stand for. The fourth thing I'll mention here is what story? Can you tell to voters that lets them know that you are deeply committed to their welfare, their safety, and their security, their quality of life, and a great environment in which to live and raise a family? I'm also going to mention a few things about executing your message. There are conventional ways to advertise the voters, and in a large city, you are going to have to do some advertising. So. As you construct your message, as you decide the kind of voters that you think are going to be very likely to vote for you when they hear your platform, and the people who are not going to vote for you under any circumstance, and the voters that are persuadable and can be brought to your side, you have to decide how you're going to disseminate that message to the public. In a small city, truthfully, all you have to do is go knock on the doors of likely voters, introduce yourself, say hello, and listen to them talk about their problems. They will like you for doing that. But it gets far more complicated when you're in a city that has more than 10 or 15,000 people. The greater the number, the more diverse it is likely to be. The higher the number, the more foreign languages are going to be spoken in your city where you have uh, challenges in communicating with voters. So as you dissect this and figure out how to execute your message, there are two requirements. One is the message that you send to a broad base of voters that explains what makes you qualified, what you're going to do for the city, and the story that demonstrates that they can trust you when they're not looking. But the other piece of it, particularly in large and diverse cities, are individual neighborhoods. And this is a truth about some large cities. You can walk three or four blocks down a street and the neighborhood is completely different in a large, 
densely packed city. Neighborhoods are the glue that keep communities together. And as you go to different neighborhoods, in fact, what you're looking for, and it's especially important in a, can a campaign for mayor, is people on the ground who are part of your apparatus, who are kind of your local captains in differing neighborhoods that may, may be compacted into a fairly small pace, but the fact is they are completely different. It is one of the keys of having a strong ground operation and a good candidate for mayor has one. Each week I set aside a little time to talk to people who are running for office and might like to chat about their campaign. If you are interested in talking about the race that you have in front of you running for mayor of a city, I invite you to click the link in the below this video and be in touch with me and I in turn will be in touch with you to schedule a call.